Hi friends, welcome to A to Z Learning channel. Today's video is about financial results of Bajaj Finance Limited. In this video, we will help you analyze and review the results that have been published earlier today by Bajaj Finance in a very simple and easy to follow manner. Bajaj Finance is a big non-banking finance company in India. They've got a huge history. They are comparable to HDFC Bank in the private sector banking. Uh, and, and the results of Bajaj Finance will prob uh, collectively the results of Bajaj Finance Limited and the HDFC Bank will set the tone in terms of what can we expect from the broader financial sector in India. So without any further delay, let's begin with our video where we will be sharing with you the key highlights of the Bajaj Finance quarterly results. Thank you. As I said, let's first quickly note the key highlights. Bajaj Finance is one of the tallest non-banking finance company in India. It's sort of a proxy to what HDFC Bank is for private sector banks in India. It's a huge company. In fact, it sets the tone in terms of what you can expect in terms of results for the other non-banking finance companies or financial services. A couple of days back, we saw results uh, for, from HDFC Bank, which were uh, below par, which were below the expectation that Street had. So the next most watched result within the financial services space was how Bajaj Finance is going to perform so that people can paint, analysts in the market can paint a picture in terms of what is going on in the financial sector in India. So let's quickly go through the key highlights before we talk about uh, uh, my take on, on the results and what you should know as, a, as an investor in the Bajaj Finance stock. So first of all, let's talk about assets under management, AUM. Year on year, there is an increase of 15%. Net interest income, basically net interest income is the interest that Bajaj Finance earn minus the interest that they pay to their depositors. There's a rise of, there is an increase of about 6% in that. So again, both these uh, count uh, positive information, but I think year on year comparison is probably less relevant because if you recall last year, the April to June quarter was heavily impacted by the nationwide lockdown situation. So the results, the financial numbers were really, really low. So as against that low benchmark, if there is an increase of whatever percentage, that's probably not really reflective of the true performance. Uh, then let's look at the operating expenses to net interest income. That's gone up. It's 30.6% as against 27.9% uh, last year. So in a way, the cost has gone up for Bajaj Finance in this quarter. Net profits, again, year on year is 4% increase, but again, in the context of what was the reality last year in the first quarter, I think 4% increase is very low. When you compare the profits with the last quarter and you look at the Q on Q, quarter on quarter performance of Bajaj Finance, there is a reduction. There is a reduction in their profits. The profits on a consolidated basis were roughly 1300 crore. Now they are down to more like 1000 crore. So almost 27, 28% reduction, which is, which is very, very poor performance. I know even this quarter, the April to June quarter had one particular month when vast majority of India was under lockdown situation. So I can absolutely understand why the results for April to June versus January to March of 21 uh, are not comparable, but uh, I think it's important to kind of note that from Q1 of 21 versus Q2 of 21, there is a reduction in the profits. The other alarming thing to kind of highlight is the net, net uh, non-performing uh, assets of the Bajaj Finance. I think that's uh, that's a very, very important benchmark. If you look at year on year, uh, they currently stand at 1.46% versus 0.45% last year. Again, 0.5% is less relevant, 
because if you would recall last year as a result of lockdown rbi uh, uh, issued guidelines in terms of moratorium and therefore even if the assets were bad and non performing banks and the nbfcs were not allowed to provide for that uh, in their books so this will not recognize as non performing assets due to the moratorium so 1.46 relative to 0.5% is less relevant but if i compare it with the uh, the q1 so jan to march of 2021 so last quarter versus this quarter then again net npa has gone up so as i said 1.46% is the net npa as on 30th june the same number as on 31st march was 0.75 so that's almost doubling the level and that's kind of quite concerning capital adequacy ratio is the other key benchmark key metric that one should look at in a financial services company uh, on that bajaj finance um, has performed well they remain in the range of 27 to 30% which is very very strong so overall what does it mean i think the key things for you as a investor to note is profits have gone down q on q and uh, partly that is because of the lockdown situation and i completely get that but their business transformation project that they are currently working on uh, that is also going to result into some saving at a later point so though opex operating expenses to net income ratio is up but because that business transformation project is on track to go live in october i am expecting that their operating expenses are going to go down npa is an area of concern but i think management commentary suggests that it is all down to that second wave of uh, pandemic in india where number of their staffs and the efficiency that they had in terms of customer contact client contact was not there but they'll bounce back uh, hopefully there won't be any third wave uh, if there's no third wave then company is still and management is still very very confident that they will meet the guidance that they introduced uh, at the beginning of the year so overall though the long term guidance remains intact the, this quarter's performance is weak compared to last quarter though it is better than uh, year on year uh, but i think somewhere in the numbers pandemic is playing so these are not like for like comparison so overall those some numbers are are down but those are explainable in the context of pandemic i am more focusing on the management commentary which remains very confident and uh, solid there is absolutely no change in their guidance so uh, i would wait for another quarter before i make any portfolio level uh, changes in terms of staying invested or or coming out of bajaj finance stock so hopefully this short video where we have tried to explain the results in a very simple and easy to manner uh, is has been helpful uh, we would really appreciate uh, hearing from you how are you finding the content of our videos if these are helping you in terms of making your decisions then please do let us know through the comments please do press the like button if you like our content and you feel that we are doing a good job uh, and then share it with your friends and family and last but not least a little bit of marketing if you've not subscribed our channel a to z learning then we would urge you to please subscribe and become part of our viewers community thank you very much and good luck with your investment decisions